Hello, it's Craig here with the breakdown for reapers, otherwise known as scythes. The reapers are less often seen in the competitive scene because they are directly competing with halberds when it comes to poised breakpoints. While they are indeed more off-meta, there are some interesting and even unique properties of this weapon class you might not know about. But before that, let's get the usual basics out of the way. The only unique moveset of the reapers belongs to the scythe. This is the regular heavy and charged heavy attack of the other reapers. This is the heavy and charged heavy attack of the scythe. As for the length of the scythes, the two infusible scythes are longer with the scythe being the longest. Now, let's move on to the unique properties of the Reapers. The first unique property is that all Reapers have a 50% guard ignore, with R2 attacks ignoring even more, like on the running, jumping, and regular heavy attacks, and even the charged heavy attacks. Reapers also have another weird and unique mechanic, which is that it has a special hyper armor that tanks through certain damage levels, completely ignoring the enemy's poise damage and poise break. Two-handed Reaper attacks are able to tank through damage level 1 and 8 stuns, while two-handed charged heavy attacks can tank through damage level 1, 2, and 8. Damage level 1 and 8 are 10 frame stuns, while damage level 2 is a 25 frame stun. All these frame data are in 30 FPS, which the game is coded in, so double them for 60 FPS. This unique hyper armor allows you to surprise your enemy doing some traits that would have originally poise broke you. You might think there isn't much application to this hyper armor, but let me give you an example. Perhaps he did it without knowing the mechanic, but Giga Thickus posted a fun combo on charged heavy scythe attacks into Loretta Slash. Yeah. It's a combo that'll be hard to catch better players with, but it is still a fun combo to pull off nevertheless, and certainly deals a ton of damage when you do pull it off. Next, let us take a look at the attack rating of the Reapers and draw some conclusions. First up, the Halo Scythe scales best to Dexterity, and even with more stat points, it gets the highest AR with a slightly quality distribution. However, this is not the recommended distribution for Halo Scythe, as its weapon art, Makila's Ring of Light only scales to Faith. If we take a look at the difference in AR with the same level of stat investment, we can see that you're only losing 4.6% AR. If you only care about the weapon art because you use Halo Scythe as a weapon art spam stick, obviously just fully invest into Faith. You will get much less AR though, so if you do attack with the Scythe, the Dexterity Faith version can easily do better. Next comes the Wing Scythe, with its unique weapon art, Angel's Wings. While this weapon art is basically a Loretta Slash, it stops hit enemies from being able to drink HP flasks, which can be particularly useful in invasions, when you're trying to finish someone off. Unlike Loretta Slash though, Angel's Wings is not an enhanced hit, it is a weapon hit, so it scales purely off your weapon AR. If you don't know the difference, you can always check my lesson on weapon art calculations. This actually works in the wing scythe's favor, as we can optimize the weapon art's damage as we optimize the weapon's AR. As you can see here, we still start with the faith investment first, and then move on to some dexterity investments, leading to a relatively higher split AR than the other scythes when they are split between physical damage and another element. Having the highest AR amongst the Reapers works well in terms of balancing, as the Wing Scythe happens to be the shortest Reaper. The Dexterity and Faith split is also not a bad split, 
as dexterity increases the cast speed of your incantations. Not to mention, you can still run the weapon on 4 faith if needed. You already have 678 AR with just a 50 faith investment, and even with the 80 faith, you still have a respectable 709 AR. Now, moving on to the regular Reapers, there are only two, the Scythe and the Grave Scythe. Remember that the big difference we've covered so far between these two Reapers is their heavy attacks. On the Heavy Infusion, the Grave Scythe is the clear winner. For a tiny amount of length loss, we are getting a much higher AR with one potential point saved from investing into Dexterity. Fire Infusion closes this AR gap a bit, but if you've watched my other weapon breakdowns or the defense math video, you'll know that this is not an infusion I would recommend in general, unless it is solely for the purpose of a PvE region with monsters weak to fire. As for Keen Infusion, the Grave Scythe is roughly 3 points higher in AR at the 56 dexterity mark, but remember, it has a higher strength requirement. Honestly, I would just take the Scythe if you're going for a dexterity build, as the Scythe scales better and beats the Grave Scythe at the 80 dexterity mark. Now, if you're just looking to use a Reaper and don't care whether you invest into strength or dexterity in particular, nor do you have a preference on the heavy attack, the Grave Scythe slightly wins out on AR. And since it is only very slightly shorter than the Scythe, the Grave Scythe is indeed what I would recommend if you want to give Reapers a try. As you will see later, it generally has a higher AR for the other infusions as well. If you are going for a dexterity build and want to use the Grave Scythe, you can also use the Lightning Infusion instead if you're not planning on buffing the Reaper. As Lightning Defense is going to be a player's lowest defense, Lightning Infusion works much better than Fire Infusion in PvP. For the Lightning Infusion, Grave Scythe has a higher AR than the regular Scythe. As per usual, Quality Infusion isn't a great infusion for meta PvP levels, but unlike most other weapon classes, Reapers somehow come quite close. 58 Strength and 58 Dexterity is indeed still more investment than 80 Dexterity or Strength, and the two-handing argument doesn't work because you can do that for the Heavy Infusion as well. Furthermore, even if you consider two-handing, the total amount of stat points spent is still more than just a flat 80 Dexterity. But this also means quality infusion is good for raw AR if you're going for high level reapers in PvE. As for Flame and Sacred, they're basically the same infusion with a different element. The Grave Scythe has a noticeably higher AR than the Scythe. And the same goes for the Magic Infusion, which is basically the intelligence version of Flame and Sacred. Unless you're doing something like the Loretta Slash combo shown in the beginning of the video, I would suggest the Grave Scythe over the Scythe for these infusions. For Cold Infusion, you can maximize their AR like this. The Grave Scythe still wins out in terms of AR, but you will notice that the Scythe is closer to having a pure dexterity investment and can be more easily mixed with other weapons on a raw dexterity build. For Poison Infusion, the AR difference is minimal, doesn't really matter much, and the Blood Infusion as well. Do remember that Blood Infusion overrides your base bleed instead of adding to it. As for Occult Infusion, I would actually take the Scythe over the Grave Scythe. As you can probably guess from the difference in bleed, Grave Scythe doesn't have the best arcane skilling on Occult Infusion. At both the 58 and 80 arcane mark, you're looking at something roughly 4% or more AR versus over 10% more bleed, while also being slightly longer and weighs 2 less. So yes, without a doubt, an Occult Scythe is better than an Occult Grave Scythe. Now for a quick summary, you're going to be choosing the Halo Scythe for its weapon art, which does quite a bit of damage on a Faith build. As for the Wing Scythe, its weapon art disables health flasks, but you do have to land with it. This is a surprise hard swap option, and also the Reaper with the highest AR. Do keep in mind that it also has the shortest reach. As for the Infusible Reapers, the Scythe has a unique heavy attack, and more than that, it also works better than the Grave Scythe on Keen and Occult. As for the other infusions, Grave Scythe tends to have a significantly higher AR for a very marginal decrease in length. Both infusible Reapers are good choices if you want to try out a Reaper's base moveset. Like and subscribe.
If you want to help me put out videos quicker, please buy my fantasy novel in the description down below, which will also allow you to request a topic from me. See you next time.